before I start showing the value of Q&I, let's review some concepts of the basic flows, right? In Curita, the basic flows, and there's a separate video that shows this in detail, what you get is from the TCP IP header, Curita extracts some information that is called NetFlow, and this is source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port, application, uh, amount of data, send, receive, etc. And then passes all that data for every, you know, every header into Curital Custom Rules Engine. And what that produces when it finds anomaly are offenses. And that's actually pretty basic. But all that data is mostly seen just on the TCP IP, TCP IP headers and the QFlow technology, which basically QNI has superseded, had the capability of inspecting the first part, the first 64 bytes of the payload. Right? So if something was found over here, you can also get that into the standard NetFlows. But what is it that, that QNI? Well, QNI is all about inspecting in great detail the full payload. Basically, QNI is actually the, the way that you actually set it up is you put a network tab. Let me try to draw a network tab in here, a representation of it. So it actually sees all the traffic that is going on on a network segment that you want to actually investigate. And it's processed each and every packets looks into the payload and those inspector understand the type of protocol being used right so he has also protocol decapper so he knows what a pdf should be should look like he knows how you know rdp works it has multiple impacts inspector to all the traffic and you have the option of actually processing jara rule which are kind of a, a logic for detecting some things malware and other things are are have they go into the payload. So basically QNI takes all that information of every packet, similar to what people were doing with, um, with full packet inspection, but the, the problem with full packet inspection is too expensive. One of the main things is because you store everything. Well, QNI doesn't store any of that. What QNI does is that it takes all that data and send it to Q radar as flows with a variation of flows called IP fix flows. And what these flows are is nothing more than extension to the standard uh, NetFlow protocol and also compute things dynamically like file hashes and file sizes, etc. And send, you know, file names and, and certificate information. And I'll show you some, some more details of it. And since those things as standard flows, net flows in Curator IP fix, the type of IP fix. So you can also get offenses to fire based on the content of the actual payload. Why is that valuable? Well, let's see some examples. In this particular case, we got an offense that fires on something called secret vulnerability. Why? What is this all about? So let me switch to the flows, and this is not in dark view uh, available at the moment, so forgive me for the change of illumination here. But what we can see is that this thing, if we inspect it in detail, this is DNS traffic for 53, and notice that it's using in the DNS request type, the SIG, as in signature type, which is unusual, unless you are doing some sort of a well, SSL over TLS and stuff like that. So, But that is just part of it. That is, and, and it detects very many more things that are abnormal in DNS. I'll, I'll show some more examples later. But it's not restricted to just DNS. Uh, but also, if we see in this particular field, the amount of data exceeds the 64 bytes that uh, DNS traffic can handle in this, but that particular field, and that makes the DNS server crashes. And that's the prelude of a subsequent attack. Again, you are not going to detect this, 
unless you are inspecting the payload. These things can go across and you don't know why this is happening and how the attack actually begun because you leave the payload uh, without looking at it. Staying on the topic of DNS, let's analyze another type of attacks that is done on DNS traffic. Let us look at this offense. Why is he saying, actually not this one, sorry, I meant to click on this one, say miscellaneous DNS, what, what is this is all about? Mozart IOC detected is what the rule is doing. How did it detect that Mozart and what that Mozart thing is? Let's actually go back into the flows again. Another example of DNS traffic. Uh, this is uh, traffic 453. If you are not looking at the payload, you may say, well, this is standard DNS traffic, so I'm not going to worry about it. But if we took, take a look at it, it's using the text field. And it's using the text field to do command and control to the mothership to say, well, give me tasks. you have any tasks for me? Do you have any tasks for me? And it's asking, and as we see here, there have been 100 of those flows, and we see that no traffic has been coming back, so at least we know that uh, that has, has not received instruction for the mothership. But that's another example of the things that you can actually detect with, when you inspect fully the payload. While many endpoint technologies like Sysmon and other calculates hashes of malicious things and send those to curator as logs, sometimes uh, the, that technology may or may not see something, but QNI actually computes the file hash of every file that it sees coming across. Let's actually take a look at uh, these uh, flows in here and see what is it that curator get. So we saw that this rule fired because it detected a file hash or something that is malicious. So in the tables of curator from the X-Force or from any source intelligence that you like, there's data coming and say this, all these file hashes are bad. And uh, curator found one of those. So how, how did it do that? Well, instead of looking at all there are too many flows in here, in order to make the search easier, and you don't have to, the, the rule in curator did this, but let's look for file hash the property file hash and show me the ones that are not empty. So I add that and if I click into any one of these we'll see the presence of a file hash and this file hash is also in one of curator tables indicating that this is malicious. Again, you're not going to get this unless you inspect the full payload. Let's get an idea of the type of rules that can benefit from getting that inspection of the payload. So if I go here into the use case manager and I search here for rules that begin on the name with Q and I and apply that filter in my demo system I have out of those 835 rules 27 and notice the things that it can actually do in properly secure certificate phishing you know these are the things that I can scroll to the second page and you can see the type of things are in there. And this is what I have in here. What else, what, what is it that I can get from the X-Force that I haven't installed that works also with this? And I can apply that filter and then how many those 27 rules could become, if I were to add those, 45. Uh, if I want to just show the ones that are in there, I can see the detail of those 18 and you can see the type of things that you can actually uh, get from the benefit of getting QNI and that, that square, yellow square indicate that those are not in my system. This work particularly, notice that it can inspect the content of a email so you don't get, you, you know, even if you get the logs from an email server there's a bunch of detail about the content of the file that you're not going to get. This thing can even detect whether there is a Word document that is attached and has the Word confidential in it and uh, it, it can really, the level of inspection that it has is really remarkable. Here is a view from a poll dashboard. You know, how do you know what, what type of applications are there? Well, this is information that is in that payload. You can detect peer-to-peer communication, you can de you detect any one of these things by virtue of inspecting the actual uh, payload itself. Another view, 
uh, is, is this uh, list of uh, type of properties are extracted from the payload. So notice, for example, in terms of application ideas, we saw how those, you know, what type of application is. Well, you, you, you get it from inspecting that traffic and it detects what type of application is. Notice all the things that you can get from the DNS traffic. We have seen some of these in action from the file. We, s we have seen the file hash, you know, everything on HTTP, respond the user agent, etc. On the proxies. Um, the type of protocol being used, uh, you know, uh, things like the information, everything about uh, the actual certificate, things like uh, JA3 hash, which are very, very useful when you have no way of on encrypting the traffic, and but yet you know that this guy went to that particular site by virtue of the hash of the transaction. This is something that the people from Salesforce. Uh, uh, discover and there are hashes of JA3 sessions so you can, you don't know what the guy did there but you can prove that the guy went, went actually there for sure and here's another list of the things that you can detect in terms of the VLANs and the type of traffic you know things that you can strike because this and this is a partial and an old list of the things that those inspector can extract from the actual payload so when you have Q&I deployed, you, you achieve the, the best point of visibility. So you, you get the log information, you get the standard flows, and now you have the full payload inspection. So nothing can escape uh, Q-Rata scrutiny.